IBM uh, announced its latest Linux-based mainframe uh, called the Emperor 4. And you might say, well, why talk about mainframes? Well, mainframes are more popular today <laughs> than they were 10 years ago. And uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. So I'm just kind of giving the backstory here. But um, Linux 1 obviously runs Linux. We're in the fourth generation uh, of this. And it essentially uses the guts of the latest Z16, uh, but uses a very different software um, uh, ecosystem. It can run containers from Red Hat. It can run uh, serverless applications. It can run your favorite Linux applications. It, it truly is uh, incredible. And the other big change that uh, the mainframe platform has taken is that's integrated uh, AI on the chip um, has the highest levels uh, of security. Quite frankly, um, it's the only hardware platform that supports the highest level of, of FIPS security. But uh, two things stood out for me, and that was, you know, e even though the company wanted to go all in on sustainability, which I, I do think, you know, the boards of directors are figuring out how do we hit our goals, but what was really crazy is the consolidation story. And I looked at the data and it, it, looked, it looked legit to me of, of what you might find in a current uh, ecosystem, but essentially you can con consolidate 55 uh, Intel servers into one Linux One box, sucking 62% less energy and taking up 86% less data center floor space. That, that freaking blows uh, my mind. So I think when clients are looking at, hey, do I bring in Sapphire Rapids or do I take a chance on this new Linux One box? And I only say take a chance as it relates to non non clients or non customers. And I I wish IBM would put a little bit more effort into going into new business as opposed to you know upselling their their current clients that that to me is a lot more uh interesting and i don't mean that this isn't interesting but i think that they would turn a lot more heads if they would you know hire uh, a completely new sales force to go after new logos uh, and a and a big one so um i was really impressed uh, you can go on their website and plug in kind of what your infrastructure looks like and it spits out a, uh, a, a TCO calculator. It also helps you potentially go to the board or go to the executive staff if you're trying to hit your, your company's sustainability goals and say, hey, let's do this. And you know, Daniel, I've really thought about this. You know, companies like Salesforce and, you know, Mark Benioff uh, are always talking about how green they want to be. They're the leaders in green, and this is what they're doing. Shouldn't companies take a chance uh, if they're currently using x86 servers today, either on-prem or in the cloud, take a chance on this yeah. Linux One box that, by the way, fits in a standard rack, fits in standard power. You don't need water cooling. You can use air cooling, just like all of your x86 stuff. If you're running Linux apps, you can run them on, on this platform. Freaking consolidate 55 uh, Intel servers. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I could think of a company that may not be a huge fan of that idea, but <laughs> we do have to be somewhat, uh, you know, we have, as analysts have to, you know, we have to set shape to the market. And in this case, there's a pretty significant uh, argument to be made. Sustainability is at the top of every company's mind. You go to an event right now, you will not hear a keynote where a company does not lean into how they're helping Mother Earth, the carbon net zero, and, and the bottom line is really the bottom line. As we get into an era of measurement, we're going to have to measure what companies are doing and what companies could be doing. So, you know, um, print, uh, Futurum analyst Stephen Dickens drove into this one. Uh, so I, I kind of went through his analysis. He provided some of the feedback during the development. Uh, you know, Pat, you really hit the sustainability thing hard. I think that's an area to lean in. I think you hit the scalability thing hard. The fact that, again, you can consolidate a lot of investment. And uh, I like what you said about the sales side. I do think IBM has sort of been like, 
you know, this is our little universe of customers yeah. and we're going to keep selling them the next box every time the next box comes out and it creates the super cycle. But what if you had a, a bigger biz development cycle that could drive more new adoption in between? And I guess that is the question of are new customers open to the idea of this type of technology versus what would be considered more um, uh, traditional or nouveau cloud architectures? Now, IBM in its whole strategy about building this true hybrid cloud that's a little bit more full stack means that IBM's building Linux One to be compatible to not just uh, the IBM cloud, but to other hyperscale cloud. And that company's been very actively working to build partnerships that can create a fabric that enables uh, companies that use a Google or an uh, Amazon or a Microsoft to be able to work uh, strategically with their uh, traditional mainframe uh, hardware. Um, the only thing I'd add, Pat, is I thought there was a pretty impressive, uh, you, you kind of touched on the on-chip on integra uh, integrated accelerator. That seems to be uh, a big focus uh, following the Telem announcement that came out in the last generation of the Z box. So they're continuing to add AI and inference features on on chip uh in the linux one so that doesn't have to be done outside of the core uh infrastructure and then the security pat i mean that's the only thing i think we didn't touch on too much here yeah. companies really showed some key focus on security uh, you know quantum safe capabilities key generation encryption uh key uh, encapsulation mechanisms hybrid key exchange schemes and this is all the stuff steven pointed out but a number of cryptographic enhancements, a lot of focus on security, which anyone that listens to this that knows about mainframes knows security has been probably the number one reason that uh, workloads have not moved off of, you know, mainframes yet, is that they're beyond being reliable and scalable and available, they're secure. And so IBM continues to lean into that. Uh, good on them, good on Ross and the team. Congratulations on the, on the launch. Yeah, just to add to the security uh, piece, like it's the only box out there that is not only quantum safe, uh, supports uh, confidential computing. And by the way, quantum safe, I don't use lightly, right? Not like cloudification or, or something like that. Essentially, what's built in is in the future, um, you can upgrade your security to be literally uh, safe from quantum-based attacks. And that could be five years in the future. That can be 10 uh, that could be 10 years uh, in the future. And, you know, they, um, uh, the company brought out a really interesting stat, which says you can execute up to 20 billion secure transactions per day uh, based on a micro, with a microservice based application running on Red Hat OpenShift. I mean, that just, it just blows my mind. And, and, uh, but anyways, great uh, uh, ads there. And, you know, Steve might know a little bit about this stuff, uh, given that he used to be in charge of uh, mainframe sales <laughs> at, uh, yeah, at uh, IBM, or at least, uh, or at least an executive uh, uh, in there. I, yeah, I, well, I think hope. you led the offering on the Linux One and the oh, Z okay. box, but uh, let's just say that there's no one more passionate about it that I've ever met. Maybe, but Ross. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so it's it's it was definitely a very in depth. I'll put it in the show notes, Pat. But you wrote a great piece on it too. You put a, a research report out, and that'll be in the notes as well. Hey, I appreciate uh, you helping me plug my own research reports. I always uh, plug you, dude. I always thanks. plug you. Yeah, I've got a. I'll have a Forbes article coming out sometimes after uh, I get back from vacation. Read so, his Forbes article; it'll be awesome. 